Hey all, Lawrence from Express Unity, and today we'll be taking a look at how we can implement a basic form of authenticated movement using TNet. Thanks for being here, and let's get on with the video. So the first thing that we want to do inside of our project is we want to find two files that we'll be editing that one of them will be used for the server, and the other will be used by both the client and server. So the first file that we want to open up and edit is called the TN game server. This script is basically built into the server and contains all the logic for our custom packets. The next script that we want to open up and we'll be editing is called the TN packet script. And this is basically the file where we define our custom packets. So inside our TN packet, what we want to add is two new packets that will be used by both our client and server. The first one will be request move with an ID of 200, and the other will be response move with the ID of 201. Alrighty, so now we want to head over to TN game server. And we want to find where all the switch case statements are for the server packets. And we want to create our own custom packet case for request move. This case will be responsible for starting the connection. We will need to be responding using the packet not response move. We are then going to be wanting to rewrite our direction. And we want to send back the speed to our client. After we do all that, we then want to end send. We don't want to end it with a reliable connection as we want to be using UDP, not TCP for our movement. The next thing that we want to do inside of our player movement script is we want to set a new TN manager packet handler. This needs to be wrapped inside an is mine. And the packet that we want to get a response from is our newly created packet dot response move. And the callback I'll be naming on response move. Inside of this, we'll be creating a new string called dir, and we'll be reading the string from the server, and then we'll be reading an integer for our speed from the server as well. Please make sure that when you're reading data from the server, that you are reading it in the same order that the server is sending it. Alrighty, so now at the other end of our player movement script, we want to create a new private void. I'm going to call it move. And we want to give it a parameter of the type string, and I'm just going to call this one direction. After this, we need to create a new variable writer, and this is going to be equal to tnmanager.client.beginSend. And it is going to be sending with the type request move, the custom packet that we made before. And then we want to write to this packet, and we want to write the direction we get passed through to our function. So we do this with writer.write and we just pass in our direction. And then we want to end the send as an unreliable connection as we'll be using UDP and not TCP. So we will do this by tnmanager.client.nsend. We want to pass in our last channel and then we want to just send false for reliable. And the next thing we want to do inside of our update function, we want to common out all of our RB dot add relative force. Um, and then we want to basically pass in our private move uh, function that we just created. And then depending on if the key is forward, backward, left or right, we want to pass in that string. So let's just go ahead and do that. Now that we've done that, back inside our on response move, we want to create a couple of if statements. Basically, we want to say if our direction at dot contains, and we want to basically check for what that string contains. In our case, we want to check for forwards, backwards, left, and right. Depending on what it is, we will then apply a rigid body force using that in speed that we had returned to us from the server.
Alrighty, so I just want to congratulate you if you've made it to the end of the video. If you've done everything correctly and compiled both the client and server, you should now have partial authenticated movement. Now you do need to remember that every time you edit the TN game server and the TN packet, you will need to rebuild the server as well. These are the files that are basically only held on the server and not the client itself. The only thing the client holds is the packet script, but not the server script. So changing any logic in the game server and not compiling it will not translate to the client being able to understand that. So do make sure you compile both the server and client every time you edit any server side functionality. Now, that being said, um, when we when I said it is partial movement, basically all we're doing is getting back a speed value from the server, right? If we wanted to make this true, truly authenticated, we'd want to do all our movement logic on the server and get the server to synchronize um, any positions from the client. However, that's a video for another day as that gets into another realm of very complicated stuff. So, as for now, hopefully you guys liked this video. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a comment down below on what you want to see next. Please uh, don't forget that we also have a Discord server, so if you require any assistance, myself and a few other members would be more than happy to help you out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.